all too often, our screens depict scenes of disasters and crimes, etc. And the aftermath of them, which are dealt with by what men and women that can only be described as heroes. The thing is that these images that we see, I'm not entirely convinced about how truthful they really are. And I think that with just a relatively simple <coughs> bit of um, maths, physics, other sciences, much of which you probably learnt at school, I can demonstrate to you that this is the case. To do this, I'm going to you pick on one individual. Now, for obvious reasons, this person, um, I don't want to name this person, so I'm going to use a pseudonym. We're going to call this person Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man, he does apparently more or less anything that an arachnid can. He has been known to spin uh, webs of more or less any size into which he can catch crooks, criminals, other, no, um, um, other thieves, etc., more or less like flying insects. Um, the, the, and I would like to now look at some of these claims about this character to determine whether they could really be true or not. Well, first off, let's look at that first claim that Spider-Man can do more or less anything that a spider can. This is fairly broad-ranging uh, claim here. Um, that, and, and so let's look primarily at maybe his acrobatic abilities. Um, spiders can tightrope walk, they can hang from threads, much like a trapeze artist. And uh, is it then conceivable that Spider-Man could do similar? Well, to answer that question, I don't think we need to look any further than the circus. And picking one circus troupe more or less at random, um, we will see that actually uh, this doesn't seem to be at all unreasonable. Here's, uh, we see great uncle Louis up the top there, tumbling off horseback, etc. So I don't think we really have much of a problem with these acrobatic claims about Spider-Man. No, instead, I want to look at this cla these claims about his web-slinging ability. Can Spider-Man, for example, even hang off a thread of spider silk. How reasonable is this? Well, to do that, we have to. We will take the common garden spider and look at some of the characteristics of the spider silk. The spider silk that emerges, for, that known as dragline silk, has a has a strength of 1.1 gigapascals. A pascal is a unit of pressure. Pressure is force um, force per unit area, and so we can work out there from therefore the dragline silk has a strength of one. <coughs> Million, uh, one billion newtons, newtons being a measure of force, per square metre. Right, how much then does Spider-Man have to, ha uh, does he need to hang off this? Can he hang off this thread? Well, to do this, we know to need, need to know that the force that Spider-Man exerts on the thread. Force equals mass times acceleration. The mass of Spider-Man, according to Marvel Comics, is 75 kilograms. The acceleration <coughs> due to gravity, according to Newton, is 9.8 metres per second squared, which gives us a force of 735 newtons. The cross-sectional area of the spider silk, therefore, that Spider-Man can hang on, is 735 divided by the 1.1 billion newtons per square metre, which comes out as a cross-sectional area of 6.7 times 10 to the minus 3 centimetres squared. And of course, because you can all remember your uh, geometry from school, you will have instantly converted this to a diameter and come to the amazing conclusion that Spider-Man can hang off a piece of spider a thread just less than one millimetre thick. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Just one millimetre thick. Now, obviously, I'm a scientist and not an engineer, so I've factored in precisely no margin of error here. Um, <laughs> and um, we, so we better hope, therefore, that Spider-Man hasn't had a particularly big breakfast that morning. Um, right, so, but of course, Spider-Man doesn't just hang from threads, does he? No, he leaps off buildings and uses the thread to arrest his falls. For example, in 2002, we saw imagery of him just doing that. He appeared to leap off a balcony. You may have seen this, um, this, this movie. He appeared to leap off a balcony and uh, catch a falling Mary Jane Johnson, his, his damsel in distress, um, using the spider silk to arrest their fall. How much spider silk did he think he needed for that? Well, um, Let's overlook for the moment the fact that they were both accelerating due to gravity and therefore he can't actually catch her if she's got a head start, but, you know, we won't worry about that for a minute. <laughs> um, the, 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 um, the, what we need to know now is, first off, the distance of the fall. Well, of course, we, we can, work, we, I can work that out, and I watched this scene 
You know, it was a tough job having to watch Spider-Man movies for research here. Um, and the distance of the fall is given by the acceleration due to gravity and the time. And the distance, of the, the time is seven seconds, so the distance of the fall is 240 metres. 240 metres, that's one high balcony. Right, and of course I hear some of you at the back say, well, doesn't spider silk stretch? It does indeed stretch, and it's a good job too. So, taking that into account, spider silk stretches by 27%, so the total fall is 240 metres plus 0.27 times 240, which equals the height of the Eiffel Tower. Right, that really was one high balcony. <laughs> right. What do we need to work out the force now of this? Well, force, now we have to take into account the stopping distance. The force of his fall now equals the velocity, uh, the mass now of Spider-Man and his girlfriend he's carrying, and the stopping distance, the stopping distance being how far the spider silk stretched. This comes out at over 4,000 newtons. That's actually only about six times more than he needed to just hang on there, but because of the stopping distance, it slows him all down really nicely. Right, so... In summary, we've got hanging around, he requires about 735 <laughs> newtons, okay? And that works out at just 0.87 grams of silk per metre of spider silk. It's pretty neat. Falling off the Eiffel Tower, you, to arrest his fall before hitting the ground, um, 4,500 odd newtons, 5 grams of spider silk per metre, that works out. That's 1.3 almost kilograms of spider silk. Where the blazes does he keep 1.3? three kilograms of spider silk. Well, spiders actually spin their silk from their abdomens. So maybe he has a secret store back there. Of course, they may have overlooked that in the film because I'm not sure that images of Spider-Man leaping through cities with spider silk emitting from his backside is quite so um, interesting. Anyway, or maybe it is. Right, anyhow, so where does he get then 1.3 kilograms of spider silk? Spider silk, and all silk, is protein, okay? He's got to have a high-protein diet. I was thinking eggs are pretty high-protein. So maybe he eats eggs for breakfast. A lot of eggs. <laughs> There's six grams of, uh, of protein in an egg. So that's 214 eggs for breakfast that Spider-Man eats just to make the spider silk for that one scene. Except it's actually not that simple either, because proteins are made from amino acids. Amino acids, there's 20-odd there's, uh, there's different amino acids, and they're all coupled together to make proteins. All proteins are not alike. For example, spider silk is made primarily from this amino acid here, glycine. 42% of it is glycine. Whereas eggs are only 3% glycine. Right? Luckily, these two amino acids over here are easily converted to glycine by man, and I assume spiders and spider-men as well, and thus actually 15% of, uh, of this, the amino acids can be converted to spider silk, uh, which means actually spider-man needed nearer 600 eggs for breakfast. <laughs> right, 600 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. Eggs weigh about 50 grams. So actually... Force time equals mass times acceleration. The f mass of the Spider-Man <laughs> plus his eggs is, uh, is, is um, 105 grams. Acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 metres per second squared, equals just over 1,000 newtons. I'm oh, sod it. Let's just say Spider-Man's an illusion. 